Hello lovely people! In today's video, I wanted to go over my NYU audition experience since that's the school I'm going to. I was planning on doing this in my dorm at NYU, but with COVID, personally for me it just made more sense since all my classes are online to stay home for this semester. So I'm at my house filming this video. So first I will be going over a little bit about the difference between Steinhardt's musical theater program and Tisch's musical theater program because surprise surprise NYU is so big that it has two musical theater programs which is insane. So if you want to skip over this part and just hear about my audition skip here and at the end I will also be going over a few reasons why I think my audition was successful, so skip here if you want to see that. So to the best of my ability, I'm going to be talking about the differences between Steinhardt and Tisch's musical theater program. So Steinhardt is a BM, which is a Bachelor of Music, so it has more of an emphasis on music and the voice and sight singing and piano and music theory and all of those great things which are very helpful for the professional world. And Tish is a BFA, which is a Bachelor of Fine Arts, and it focuses more on acting. So the emphasis of each school is different. And if you don't know the difference between a BM, BFA, and a BA, I have a video on that, so check that out. Now you can only try out for one of these programs, so you can't try out for both. You have to choose. If you're not much of a dancer, if you're not very comfortable dancing, or you don't have a lot of dance experience, but you're a really strong singer, then I highly recommend applying to Steinhardt's program. And then once you're in the program, of course, you'll have a ton of dance classes. So Steinhardt has a pre-screen that you have to pass before you can schedule an in-person audition. But with Tisch, you can just schedule an in-person audition. Except if you do apply early decision to Steinhardt's musical theater program, you don't have to do a pre-screen. And early decision is the binding one. So if you get in, you have to go there. So for Steinhardt's in-person audition, you need one monologue and then three songs. You can have cuts of them. And then you also have to do sight singing and there's no dance call. And then with Tish, there's a dance call and you need two monologues and two songs. So I'm gonna start with my pre-screen. I needed two songs, two full songs, and one had to be before 1965 and the other had to be after that. So I sang In My Dreams from Anastasia and Cockhead Optimus from South Pacific. And I turned in my pre-screen on December 12th, 2019. And then on January 2nd, I received an email that I passed it and that I needed to set an in-person audition date. So. I signed up for February 23rd and it worked really well because my theater group was doing a trip to New York so I would already be in New York on the 23rd. So the night before my audition we went and saw Beetlejuice and then I went back to my hotel, got all my stuff, and then I went to a different hotel that was closer to NYU with my dad. And then in the morning, you know, I got ready, did the whole shebang, drinking my tea, steaming, singing. And then I got to the building and I had extra time because I got there early as you should do for any audition. And something I remember, I was going up to a different floor because they had practice rooms. And I remember seeing this one kid walking around who was clearly going to the school. And I was like, man, I want to be that kid. I want to go to the school so bad. So I practiced my songs and then I went back down and I sat in a hallway and I filled out paperwork that they need, you know, for what I'm going to sing and perform in the audition room. And as I was doing that, I was like writing down my monologue and my friend had just told me that this one that I just started doing was kind of overdone. So I was like, okay, I'll do the other one. I haven't done it in a while, but I'll do that one instead. And as I was writing it down, I heard from in the audition room, the girl before me was doing the monologue that I almost did. So Becca, I'm so thankful for you. And I already told you this, but thank you. <laughs> Anyways, I entered the room and I had to have three songs and I was able to have cuts of them and they had to be from different time periods. So anything before to 1965 and then 1965 to 1990 and then 1990 to present day. And then I also need one one minute contemporary monologue. So I got into the room and they look at your songs and they're like, okay, what would you like to sing first? And they let you pick your first song. And this is different from some auditions because you don't go straight to the pianist and talk to them and say, oh, these are my songs. Give them the whole spiel, you know? So I was like, well, I'll sing Anything Goes first. So I went to the pianist, you know, I talked to her and then I took a sip of water, which they were thankfully very nice about because my throat gets very dry in auditions because I'm nervous. And like at one audition, they were like, um, can you please put your water bottle over there? And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. 
um, but they were completely fine with it. So I sang that song, it all went great. And then they looked at my other two songs and they were like, okay, we're gonna have you sing In My Dreams. My other song was Christmas Lullaby, by the way. So again, I went and talked to the pianist, drank my water. There was no water left. So I was kind of like internally panicking because my throat was so dry. So I had my two drops of water and I went and sang and they stopped me in the middle of the song. Now I wasn't really like scared about this because they did stop the person before me. So I'm guessing this is kind of what they do. And they gave me correction, which is, I think it's just fun when they give corrections because you get to do different things in the audition room. And so they asked me to sing for my belly button. And I was like, what? Okay, this is weird, but sure. And that's something that's supposed to help with more supported singing. So I did that and I'm pretty sure they had me talk through my song or like sing part of it. And then I sang the entire thing without them stopping me. It's something to keep in mind. I mean, they were just so nice. You know, they were so smiley. And at some auditions, people are kind of mad looking. Sometimes they have no expressions and you really can't read them, but they, looks so happy. And I feel a little bit weird saying this because I don't wanna seem arrogant or anything, but like they seemed like they liked me. They look at each other like happy, like, oh my gosh, you know? So that's a good thing. Now they didn't have me do my third song. They didn't have the girl before me do her third song. That's just there, I guess, if they wanna hear more. So then I did my monologue, which I did one from the 5th of July and I got most of the way through and they were like, okay, thank you, that's enough. And then I did the sight singing, which I had practiced so much before because I hadn't sight read anything in forever since I wasn't able to do chorus my senior year of high school. So I was with my theater group, you know, walking through New York. I had my sight singing factory app open and I was just practicing sight singing again and again and again, like quietly to myself. And then when I did the sight singing, it was really easy. They had me sing it on do. I started singing it on solfege, which is do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. And they're like, oh, can you do it on do? And I was like, yeah, of course. So I did it on do and the largest jump was like a whole step. Nothing higher than that. It was very simple. And then afterwards they asked me if I had any questions and then it was over. It was honestly like the quickest audition I've ever had. Quicker than some of my unified auditions because usually with auditions, you have a quick singing and acting audition and then you sit around for hours and hours and hours and then you finally do your dance call. And they were also really great about organizing it so that you had your time and you can get there like half an hour before and just wait instead of getting there early in the morning but not having your audition till like 2.30 in the afternoon. And just something to keep in mind, by no means do I think this is my best audition. I don't think it was a terrible audition by any means, but it wasn't even my best audition and I got in. So if you're having an off day, which I kind of was, you just gotta keep in that happy mindset and that positive mindset that it's gonna be okay and you're still gonna just do your best. So after my audition, you know, my dad and I were walking around New York and the thing I definitely regret is not walking more because I just switched my high heels. I wear high heels to auditions because I feel powerful and they hurt so bad. So we didn't walk very far and I was like, it's okay if I get in, I can just go back and tour the school. And that didn't happen with COVID sadly. <sighs> but you know. And I also remember when we got back to the parking garage where my dad had parked his car, the guy there was like, oh, how was your audition? Because my dad had been telling him that I had my audition, so he remembered, which I thought was very sweet. Oh, and I got donuts afterwards. We went to this place that was like, I don't know, 15, 20 minute walk away because we were just walking nowhere because we both love the city. And there was this one place that just had like, handmade donuts and it was like so great and i think that's a great thing to do you know getting ice cream or going to the movies or getting donuts after your audition because you want to have a positive look on auditions and not just like i'm scared so on march 30th 2020 i was awaiting an email because i knew everybody would hear back if they got in if they didn't get in so you know i was very stressed and every time i got a notification on my phone my heart would just leap and i'm like oh my god is this it oh my god is this it and i remember this one email i got a notification and for the first time i didn't check it right away but i don't know how i just knew i'm like this is this is the email and it was the email 
and I opened it and it said, congrats, you have been, you know, accepted to NYU. And I'm like, oh my God. But I'm like, but did I get accepted into the program? And then I looked at my major and I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And I was, I was so happy. I was like, what's going on? I was bawling my eyes out. I was so happy. And finally, after I collected myself, I went out to my dad on the porch and I was like, dad, I think I got into NYU. And he was like, what do you mean think? And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, there's no way I actually got in, but I'm pretty sure I did. And we ended up emailing somebody just to double check. Cause I was like, there's no way, there's no way. And honestly, I still have trouble like accepting the fact that I've gone in. I'm like expecting the email that's like, oh, we are so sorry. We accidentally meant to accept somebody else, not you. We are so sorry, deepest regards. But obviously that hasn't happened and I've already signed up for all my classes. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over a few reasons why I think it was a successful audition. First, what I was wearing. I was not wearing a cookie cutter lace dress that everybody wears or even just like a nice fancy dress, even if it's not lace, like everybody wears those dresses. Don't make that mistake in the beginning of the year. This is not the beginning of the audition season, but I was wearing dark jeans, the darker the nicer. I was wearing a black flowy top and black heels. Realizing now I was in a lot of dark colors, but I think it's fine. I mean, it worked out clearly. I'm not saying a pop of color wouldn't have been nice, but it worked out. So I was wearing something I was confident in and I really liked my outfit. It was something that I kind of would wear on like a regular basis, just like a little bit nicer, I guess, because the heels I was wearing were a little bit nicer. My darker jeans looked nicer. So I'm confident in that because I wear that every day. And yes, I wear heels to school. I'm not like super short or anything. I just feel like super powerful. Two, it was my last audition. So not only was I getting better at auditioning and college auditions, but I was also the least stressed and the most confident because I had been through so many auditions. So I definitely recommend putting your top schools at the end because you're just gonna be so much better at auditioning and you're gonna be better in the audition. Three, confidence is key. So fake it till you make it. They want someone who's confident. Why wouldn't they? So even if you're not confident, just pretend you are. I mean, even when there are obstacles thrown at you, when they are like sing from your belly button, I was like, what, what? I don't, okay, sure. And I was like very confident about that. And I was very open to that. And I was like, okay, sure. And I was having fun with it. And I didn't let it take me out of the zone of being confident and being like, I'm gonna do well in this audition. I was like, you know what? throw any obstacle at me, I got it. And also in that audition, I did give a slightly faster tempo for my first song, but because it was my last audition, I had already learned what to do because this happened at one of my other auditions. I had talked to my coach about that and she was like, well, you should not just expect them to meet you. What you should do is try and get to them and maybe not completely because they can meet you like halfway, but you need to be the one who's making some changes and don't let it show on your face, but think about how slowing down your song is gonna change your character. And I think that really helped because I was prepared for anything to go wrong and it did and I was good. And the last thing is I had a very positive mindset. Now I had already heard from some schools that were ranked lower that I was not accepted into the program. And that's hard to hear, especially when you're going to a school that is your dream school and it's ranked high and you're like, well, if I have got rejected from this school, how am I supposed to get into this program? And I was thinking that before my audition, but when I got there instead, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna change my mindset. Instead of being negative about this, I'm just gonna be in the mindset that this is my school and this is where I am going. And that is what I did. And I embraced that this is where I'm gonna go. And this mindset obviously isn't gonna guarantee you get into the school, but it's just gonna help you have more confidence. And being in a positive mindset is gonna help you so much so you're not in your head in the audition. So that is everything I have to say. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're applying to NYU, definitely let me know. I think it's a great school. And like this video, subscribe and turn on your notifications because I have a ton of videos coming out and I have so many that have already come out. So definitely check those out and leave any questions. If you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them because I love helping you guys and have a wonderful day. Bye.